So coming to the cerebral cortex, the cerebral cortex is made up of multiple layers. Especially it is made up of six layers. One, two, six. Out of this, the first and the last layer, they both start with the letter M. The first layer is called as molecular layer and the last one is called as multiform layer. In between, we have the granular layer and pyramidal layer. There is granule-like substances which are present during staining, so it is called as granular layer. And pyramidal cells are present in some layers, so it is called as pyramidal layer. So this second layer is external granule cell layer, then external pyramidal cell layer. Then fourth and fifth will be internal granule cell layer and internal pyramidal cell layer. Out of this, the specific nuclei from the thalamus always reaches the area or the layer number four. From the thalamus, they specifically reach the area four. And other nuclei, the thalamus are various multiple nuclei, whenever it is a specific nuclei, they reach there or grossly they can reach the first four layers also. But the layer four is the most important one for the thalamic entry or the thalamic endpoints. Now, there are four different types of cells. Those cells are pyramidal cells, spiny stellate cells, then basket cells and channelier cells. So, these are the four different types of cells which are present in the cerebral cortex. Out of this, two are excitatory. The first two, that is pyramidal and stellate, they are excitatory and they produce a neurotransmitter glutamate. The second two, basket and channelier, they are inhibitory and they produce a neurotransmitter GABA. Out of all these cells, just remember channelier cell which is the strongest inhibitory signal to the pyramidal cell. And pyramidal cell is the most important cell, cell layer where, where, from which the, all the major tract starts from. So this is the pyramidal cell layer. Then coming to the other uh, regions, whenever we talk about a cerebral cortex, suppose this is a cerebral cortex and the specific areas are mapped like the uh, motor's area, then the uh, sensory area, then the visual area, auditory area. But rest of the regions of the brain there is a huge chunk of brain, which is like a gray zone. They are a, there is not specific nuclei present. Instead, they are involved in associating all the sensation. For example, when we hear it, we have to assess it and we can identify the person who is speaking. Every this thought process and association and cognition is done with the help of the rest of the areas of the brain. The specific nuclei occupies just 20 percentage in the brain. The rest, everything is the association areas. So there are several association areas and all their functions are very important. This association areas are the ones which is involved in cognition function. What is cognition? Understanding the external world is the cognition. So whenever there is a damage to these association areas, we obviously will land up in some kind of disorder. Already we have seen in the sensory system, whenever the somatic sensory area is affected, the person has presented with hemineglect syndrome also. Now specifically which uh, association area is involved in that, we will going to see. So coming to the first association area, the frontal association area. The frontal association area is very much involved in the behavioral aspects. Suppose you are in a home and you are partying. You will be wearing your dresses, whatever you like. Like you will be wearing a shorts and a tees. But whenever you go in for a wedding or something, we will dress up nicely. So the same person's behavior is changing according to the social context. That is why frontal lobe is one of the most developed lobes in the human brain compared with lower animals and it is involved in the behavioral aspect. So if the frontal lobe is damaged, there is a case of Phineas cage. It is an historical uh, case wherein the person frontal lobe is affected because of the severe injury through a steel rod. He is a very good intelligent scientist who used to do all the railway tracks. But during a blast of the railway track, what happened is there is a steel rod which has penetrated his frontal lobe. After this injury, what has happened to him? The person's behavior is completely lost. He used to get rage, anxiety, everything, all of a sudden. So this behavior, that's how they came to know that this frontal area is involved in behavioral aspect. And it is also involved in working memory, especially the free frontal cortex is involved in working memory. Working memory is, suppose if I tell you something and you remember it for a very short of time by repeating it, that is working memory. Now coming to the next lobe, frontal is done, now going for the parietal. The parietal association area, they are involved in spatial awareness. They are involved in spatial awareness. And they are very, very essential for the sensory guidance of a motor behavior. They are very, very important for the sensory guidance of a motor behavior. So what will happen if there is no spatial awareness? It brings us to the contralateral hemineglect syndrome. We are give, not giving attention to one half of the body. There are several examples. Whenever the person is asked to bisect a line, Suppose this line is there, whenever the person is asked to bicep, ideally we will be doing it here. But this person 
for him this half is completely gone he don't recognizes this half itself he'll consider this as the line and he will bisect it somewhere here so this can happen and the person will eat only half of his food in the plate and he will he'll be completely ignorant of his own body also so this contralateral hemineglic syndrome is very specific for parietal association area lesion and parietal is the area where the somatosensory association is also located now coming to the temporal association area this temporal association area is closely related with recognition of some of the sensory stimuli and it is also storing the factual knowledge and there is a very specific area for spatial recognition suppose your friend comes in you can just by seeing he doesn't have to talk to you just by seeing his face you will be able to recognize but in this person what happens is whenever there is a temporal lobe association area damage what will happen is he will not be able to recognize his known people like his uh, maybe his friends or relatives also he will not be able to identify this type of uh, not recognizing the facial features is called as prosopagnosia prosopagnosia and agnosia is the term which is used for not knowing the subject will not be knowing and prosopagnosia means inability to identify by a, a subject by facial features there is no specific area called as occipital association area why because is it the occipital maximum is taken by the visual cortex most of the occipital region is taken by the visual cortex that's why the occipital area is not involved in it some books refer it as parieto temporo occipital areas and coming to the last association area that is the limbic association area the limbic system is very much essential for emotion as we are going to see further in our discussion it is very very important for emotion it is also involved in episodic memory episodic memory so this is the function of limbic association area